thank you for having me here. So let me take you to a scene from my childhood. Is it middle of the night? It is the night after my sixth birthday. Outside there is a thunderstorm. I open the window and cold air blows into my room. My father left me alone five years after my birth. And my mother suffered from depression. She never touched or embraced me. When she was angry, she would hit me with a um, cooking spoon, and sometimes so hard that the spoon broke in twice. It was dark days for me. The only bacons of hope were my grandma and my computer. I got the computer as a present just a few hours before, and I didn't expect it that it would be a gift for my life. And this night, I sit in front of the computer, switch it on, and for me, it was a journey into a new world. And the journey begins. One of the first things that I discovered in the journey was a speech recognition software. You speak into a microphone and the computer types for you. As a user, you could train the computer by reading out given sentences out loud and repeat, repeating and proof understanding over the time. This is, in a simplified sense, how artificial intelligence work. Having a sensor and another unit and computer with software, and the software learns with a given sensor data over the time. It took me weeks to train the computer, and even after these weeks, the results were awful. But I was impressed that my computer could learn from me. And I developed smart software that gave me income when, when I was only a teen. It was important for me because my family was very poor. At the age of 17, I joined the Air Force. I became an officer and get insights into the AI research from, ever, uh, from, from the Federal Armed Forces. The military plays a very important role for AI research. The US Department of Defense, for example, developed a core of the program, but is, uh, well, uh, of a program, but it's today very well known as Siri. So you just press a button, talk to your smartphone, and you get instantly feedback. So now mil millions of individuals around the world talking day by day in different language to its so-called personal assistants like Siri. Some assistants are already translate language via voice. And the idea behind such voice translator is that you can go anywhere on Earth and communicate with other humans. But there's a small problem. If you ask some foreign students what is the main problem if you not talk in mother tongue, then we will say, it is hard for me to express me in deeply. So communication doesn't just mean to transfer words. It's about rhythm, culture, expression. So if your words doesn't agree to your body and your emotions, then you feel quickly isolated from others. So today, technical solutions are not that pretty. Let's try to find another approach. Let's upgrade our personal assistance a little bit. Some of you might have heard about Elon Musk's brain chips idea. It sounds a little bit like sci cyborg science fiction, I know. But it will just focus on a small piece on that. And that is using the brain waves. You can already implement the de that technology in a baseball cap today. Put it on your head, and then you can dictate the computer text just by thinking. Imagine how awesome would that, would that be? You go into the park, having a walk, and your next brainstorm session, or you're writing the next book, books in the speed of your thoughts. What is it about rethinking communication in combination with technology? I could send my emotions to you, and you get a sense of, the, of how I am and how I feel. Imagine what this progress could mean for intercultural differences. 
With the help of such empathy machine, it will be possible to see life, you know, to even feel life from someone else, from someone others. When connected with my personal assistant, then I can smoothly transfer my history to you. And your personal assistant can translate into your own language, and you will understand me better. It would be easier to understand those who have another life history, other ethics, ethics, religion, opinions. And especially in time which politi political conflicts are becoming more and more violent, intercultural understanding is becoming increasingly important. Today's research shows that well-matched communication is the key for value, conversation, and feeling empathy to each other. And we all know that deep conversation and deep relationship is the most important thing for happy and a fulfilling life. So let's move from fulfilling life to work. 200 years ago, with the introduction of machines, the industrial age began. We got to use from the morning to the evening, day by day. And every one of us is here in this room is born into that age. Our society is too used to the work in this, through this working rhythm. We don't know how it could be otherwise. But a growing number of people, and especially in my generation and after, they want to have a new kind of work. They're asking for meaningful jobs. Want to see their children grow. grow. Want to spend more time with their partners. And even have more freedom for themselves and to have own hobbies. Artificial intelligence offers that possibility to make this wishes come true. The industry today is like a pyramid. At the base, you have the workers. In the middle, you have the information workers and the management. In the very top, you have the capital and the entrepreneurs. So the middle part of it is the most easiest path to automate through artificial intelligence. The last report of PricewaterhouseCoopers expect that by 2030, in Germany, two out of 10 jobs will have been taken by AI. So they are 20%. In the United States, 40%. Four out of 10. I read in a newspaper about an investor who visits the CEO of Nokia just a few days after Apple released its first iPhone in 2007. The investor asked the CEO of Nokia if he is not afraid about Apple. And the CEO watched his face and laughed and said, you don't really believe that Apple is able to create mobile phones. I see similar changes for many managers who still make stable profits today. Many companies and the traditional political system are too slow for the rapidly growing technology. Digitalization is a step before artificial intelligence. What does it mean for our society? I spent my whole life that someone comes by and asks me this question. Why do we work? And that, and that leads me to another pyramid. And that is the pyramid of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In the base, every one of us wants to have a home, wants food. And I want to have a security environment. Printing houses, growing food in a loop, and autonomous delivery would be already possible today. So the next layer, the middle of the pyramid, concerned with communication and relationships, feeling empathy for each other. Here AI could support us, for example, with our empathy machine, what I talked just before, a human-to-human -human translator. We have the possibility, but we don't focus on realize those dreams. We 
we impl implementing them in our societies not as fast as it could be. We could switch our focus from the industry pyramid to the pyramid of needs and then scale it to our societies. If we had cover space in the middle of the pyramid, then we could concentrate on the top of the, of the pyramid. And this is the individual needs and self-realization. Many of us do not just work to make money. Some of us follow a purpose. They want to work for something that is bigger than themselves. More people could be, become creative workers, entrepreneurs, thinkers, designers. But what does this transformation of work mean for education? Many of you here in this room are students. The probability is high that you have been educated for 17 years, sitting every day in school or in university. That is a big piece of your lifetime. You spend a lot of time reading in textbooks, scripts, in scientific journals, and even on the internet. Every, if everything runs smoothly, you will finish, you get a degree, and then you leave your university and read some headlines like lawyers could be replaced by artificial intelligence, or IBM Watson is better in diagnosing cancer than human doctors. IBM Watson is a cognitive system that is able to perform the same cognitive tasks as students. Reading, reading in scientific journals and scripts on, on the internet. But IBM, IBM Watson can do it 24-7 and it will not forget after, after passing the exam. <laughs> so no one could reach IBM Watson abilities in doing that. What if we use safe time for a more life-orientated, a more human-related approach of education. Every one of us is born with the power of imagination. When we come on Earth as a children, we discover the world, we explore the nature. We are actors, creators, musicians. And then we are pressed into the assembly line. And this assembly line leads directly to industry. And this is what we call school. What if we focus to a partnership with technology that is expanding children's power instead of cutting it? Something that is that teacher alone could not do today. My suggestion is that we use education time to teach values, interpersonal skills, and to help children to work with intelligent assistance. And especially for those things they will not need in a few years. Since machines will do it better. I think this is more important than educating children to become a perfect exam solving machines. I said at the beginning that I, that, I, that I had two things that delighted me as a children. The one was my computer and the other was my grandma. My computer gave me access to technology and artificial intelligence. And my grandma gave me the access to emotions and consciousness. So for me, the world of technology and artificial intelligence and emotion and consciousness belongs together. My grandma is gone. But she taught me that my body is not just a platform to get abused by cooking spoons. And my body is also not just a box to move my brain every day to work day in, day out. Our bodies are gates to the world of senses. Consciousness is what makes us human. Mother Theresa once said, the problem of our world is that we draw our circles of our families too small. Technology can let our circles shrink, pull us back, isolate us from society and make us ill. However, technology can, uh, can also let our circles grow. Artificial intelligence could support us humans in communication and enable us in rich interpersonal communication. 
Artificial intelligence could support us human in workplace, provide us with even better quality of life and a new, more meaningful jobs. Artificial intelligence could support us human in empowering the children and get an education that helps them fulfill their individual potential. Let us build artificial intelligence in the way that doesn't crush us, but embrace us. To make it clear, I am strongly belief it is not artificial intelligence that is building a better world. It is the dreams connected with the heart and the soul behind artificial intelligence that is building a better world. Thank you.